records will be broken, bodies pushed to their limits, and legends created as 12 teams battle to win the longest ocean race on the planet. This is the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race. The sea state has built and the winds are up. To the north of Henry Lloyd, the Qingdao yacht retains a slender lead. But many teams choose to delve lower into the roaring 40s, where fresh winds from the Antarctic see their temperatures plummet. They race on through steep swells with mean wind speeds of 40 knots and gusts of over 60, and the injury toll mounts. Derry London Derry Dura surfs down a huge wave at speed and suffers a dramatic broach as their onboard camera show. The 70-foot yacht suddenly pitched 90 degrees onto its side, the deck underwater with the crew hanging from their lifelines. Two of them are injured in this incident and need treatment. Michelle Porter from London suffers a suspected broken arm, and so the team becomes the second to suspend racing and divert to Port Elizabeth for evacuation. The Southern Ocean ramps up its onslaught on the fleet. Meanwhile, Qingdao continues to set the pace on the racetrack. After an eventful four days that see two yachts forced to divert with casualties, Henry Lloyd keeps up the pressure in second ahead of the following pack of one DLL, Great Britain, PSP Logistics and Invest Africa, as both Mission Performance, then Derry London Derry Dura rejoin the race. As day five dawns, one DLL skipper, Oli Cottrell, is sailing as fast as possible, notching up almost 300 miles in 24 hours. We're uh, currently in a podium position now. There's still two, nearly 4,000 miles to go. Uh, another 16 on that, so 3,780 odd miles to go to the uh, finish, so there's still a long way to race, but um, we've been working really hard, and uh, so far we're managing to stay at the front of the fleet, which is really nice. The crew have had to work really hard for it. The, uh, the weather's been quite, quite rough. <laughs> And it gets rougher still in the following days with gusts over 70 knots recorded as the relentless pace to Australia continues at full tilt, testing everyone on board. We're experiencing, and have experienced since race time, pretty standard southern ocean conditions with just a successive low pressures or cold fronts moving through. So we started off in some light breeze trying to get out around the tip of South Africa and the winds were quite light with high pressure there. But then uh, the first low came in from the west and gave us a really good, uh, good strong westerly breeze. So we had probably you know, gusts into the 60 knot range, which is huge. First time these boats have seen conditions like that. And yeah, it's really impressive how well they handled it. Um, the boat speeds were really good. We took a fairly conservative approach, you know, kept the sail plan quite small, and just made sure we made it through that first storm without any damage. And right now we're kind of in a lull after that one passed through. And in a couple of years time, we're gonna get hit by another storm that looks to be about as strong as the first one. So pretty relentless out here. With lows continuing to batter the fleet, the pace quickens again. Leaders Qingdao clinch three bonus points for being first to the scoring gate, eight days out of Cape Town. Henry Lloyd picks up two points, and one DLL a single point towards the overall leaderboard. Over the coming days, more lows and freezing winds underline why the Roaring Forties have such a fierce reputation. The crews endure bitter cold and extreme conditions pushing hard for the lead while moving ahead of one DLL into third place. The crew of Great Britain are unrelenting, chasing new race leader Henry Lloyd, but suffer a powerful impact as a wave smashes them from a beam, heeling the yacht over to 60 degrees. Washed across the pit by the force, Jim Hendry is saved by his harness lines, but the impact knocks him unconscious and severely bruises his ribs. The team continues racing after some recovery time, as the injury toll builds across the fleet, while crews battle to keep racing in these intense conditions. Finally, the storms subside as the race moves into its closing phase, where the results will be decided, and there's time to reflect on the experience aboard third-placed one DLL. Sometimes I feel uh, much too unexperienced for this leg. It was so tough to cross the Southern Ocean and to have all these circumstances, all the power of the sea. I never expected that it will be so hard as it was. Most challenging were the big lows coming in. We had really wind speeds up to 70 knots and then to make a headsail change or to, uh, to lie in your bunk even is uh, very, very hard. 
So uh, that were quite tough days. But as you can see per today, the sun is shining. We are expecting another small low coming to Albany, but that will be not so hard, hopefully, uh, as it was before. We have a really nice fight for the position uh, to stay on number two. We are fighting against uh, GB, that's really nice. And I guess it will be uh, so nice to see Albany after all these hard work and these hard days. But there's a lot of uh, good team spirit in and uh, we will survive. With two points for the Ocean Sprint won by PSP Logistics for the fastest crossing of 18 hours and two minutes, the fleet races towards the finish over the last few hundred miles with the leaders locked together after 21 days and almost 5,000 miles. Around the final headlands into Albany, Great Britain has extended a slim lead over Henry Lloyd in the closing miles and the team is delighted to cross the line, winning the Kinjalin Cup. We had a number of incidents. You know, you could over-dramatise it and say, uh, it's exceptionally tough. But it's the Southern Ocean. It's sold as a very rough, very, you know, windy, sleigh ride, tough conditions. The one thing that did come out of the blue for us was the knockdown we had, where one of our crew members was injured. We had a pause there. We kind of gathered our thoughts. We took a bit of time, and then we got back on it and started hunting the pack in front of us. I think someone on our Facebook page, page likened Team Great Britain to the Greyhound of the Southern Ocean, and uh, yeah, we Greyhounded it and we got our rabbit. Barely 27 minutes later, the Henry Lloyd team secures second place. It's a great race. I mean, we got second over the line, and uh, for the third race in a row, we've got uh, max points, sort of thing. So we've improved our position on the leaderboard. So yes, line honors would be nice, but uh, it's quite difficult to win a leg. Uh, you got to push the boat pretty hard. Coming in yesterday, we, we were both pushing hard under medium weight kites. In Great Britain, they jived away, stayed away from the squall, and uh, that was enough to put them in the lead. We thought we might have one chance as we came in towards the finish as they got into a, a light patch under the cliffs here. Um, but it wasn't quite enough of a slowdown for us to, to get ahead. We're definitely happy with being at the top of the leaderboard and uh, gained one more point on GB here, so uh, extending our lead there. And uh, yeah, we're still quite confident and uh, happy how things are going. Later in the day, one DLL is welcome to the city of Albany in a hard fought third place. We're really, really, really happy on one deal. We always set out to be competitive and basically I think we always have been. The biggest thing for us was continuous improvement. That was one of our, our goals from the outset. And so far we've achieved that with um, our positions getting one better every time we've come in. Now, that's obviously going to be a tall order to maintain. Um, we've always set out to achieve a podium and we did that. So that was really good. Um, at, you know, when we found ourselves in first position uh, on a couple of occasions, we were really, really happy. Unfortunately, uh, as, as ocean sailing goes, we had a bit of an issue with our Code 2 kite and we uh, did severe damage to it. And once that happened, we lost the lead and we were unable to be competitive with the other two boats who were also very quick without that sail. But it's nice to know that up until that point, we were six miles ahead of the other two and uh, I was getting emails off them saying we can't catch you. Most of the fleet arrives over the next day. Qingdao takes fourth. <laughs> and Switzerland fifth, as one by one their Southern Ocean slate ride comes to a close. But there's still some exciting racing further back with four yachts all within sight of each other as they bear down on the line. After suspending racing on day two, Mission Performance's crew have come back with determination and are flying their kite as they close in on Invest Africa overtaking on the final 100 meters after almost 5,000 miles of racing. But just as it looked all over in a classic match race maneuver, skipper Rich Gould brought Invest Africa up close behind to cover mission performance, and a split second separates them over the line. A fantastic reward for Matt Mitchell's team after such a dramatic race four. The, the tension was unbelievable, it was awesome, electric, um, you know, I mean, we're the only group, of the, well, the only boat of the four that uh, decided to fire the spinnaker on the way in, and it, re it really paid off. I mean, we managed to reel back a, a, sp a spot at least, and just had that battle with Africa right at the end, and uh, our, kite, our, our kite collapsed, and then uh, refilled again, and we just managed to sneak him in. So, yeah, really good, really good.